Welcome back to Teresa's Dead. My name is Teresa and I'm very much alive. I have an awful garbage, filthy mouth, so viewer discretion is advised, but if you're not into that or weird shit in general, this is definitely not the place for you. Feel free to X out the video here. No harm, no foul, but I'll remember our time fondly. Y'all, I am so excited and also kind of terrified to do this video because, well, one, a lot of people requested it from my declutter video. If you haven't seen that declutter video, I'll link it up in the corner there. And I was like, you know, in a very cheeky way, like if you want to see me like talk about Pat McGrath palettes let me know and everyone was like yes please and I don't know if it's because you know that I'm no nonsense or is it because you know that I struggle ranking things I am a Libra to its core and I often fight myself when trying to rank products so uh, I actually did a little bit of homework and I kind of have a list of what I think is the top but I have a feeling the more I look at this list the more I'm starting to kind of doubt some of my picks and I kind of think I might move some of them around as we are talking. So one, this video is going to be messy. Uh, two, <laughs> two, I'm probably going to get flustered and annoyed with myself. So I apologize in advance. But three, most importantly, this is my opinion. What I say is not gospel, okay? Like everyone has their different opinions on how they rank these palettes. I, I don't care. <laughs> list according to me. You, we could agree, we could not agree, whatever. The one thing I can guarantee is that this will be at least entertaining. So that's <laughs> Let's start with the best and then we're gonna go to the worst because I was gonna do a flip and do the worst first but we're gonna kind of speed through the best because the worst, there are a lot. <laughs> There are a lot of like not great palettes that I'm still trying to figure out what's the order of like the shittiest. Anyway, let's start with the best. And it's actually what I have on my eyes today. <sighs> Y'all, I still talk about this palette because it's so good. This is the Divine Rose 2 in the pink edition, whatever this is. If you got it in the black edition, that's fine. But this is what makes this palette extra special. I don't understand why this brand keeps coming up with this color story. They nailed it here. Stop. <laughs> Stop. I cannot stand the amount of just fuckery <laughs> that this brand pulls. Basically kind of pulling a lot of inspiration from this palette and then maybe like adding a gold here and there. I don't know. It's just kind of garbage. I feel like once they nailed it here, they should just kind of like retire the whole pink motif, but I digress. What I love about this palette is one, there's a multi-chrome in it. Multi-chrome is actually fantastic. Is it the best multi-chrome? No, I still kind of hold out that Cleona obviously is the king of multi-chromes, but for a luxury brand, it's fucking good. I also love the other shimmer shades or like the special edition shades or whatever the fuck they call them in the Mothership palettes. These shades are not gritty. They are smooth to the touch and incredibly pigmented. Every shade in this palette just works so well with each other. The mattes are incredibly buttery and smooth and just blend so effortlessly. The shit does the fucking work for you. You cannot ask for a better palette, a better quality, a better color story. Everything about this is top tier. S tier. And I feel like ever since this palette, it's been a real struggle trying to kind of top this. This is like 10, 10, 10 across the boards. And I think the brand peaked after this. <laughs> I don't know, they should have fucking retired, okay? This this is amazing. I keep chasing that dragon, hoping that there's gonna be another palette that's gonna be similar to this. And there is it. There hasn't been, in my humble, humble opinion. Um, but yeah. This is number one. Now, number two is something that I'm just gonna pop a picture right here because I just decluttered it. And I know you're probably saying, bitch, it's number two. Why did you declutter it? Well, bitch, it's old, okay? <laughs> It's old and like I love it, but it's just it's it's not it's not what I'm using right now And I know that the quality is still fucking solid on that little guy So that is going to a good home to my friend who's been eyeing it for like 85 years So I'm talking about the sublime mothership. Okay. Well, actually, you know, I should take this back in today's video I'm gonna talk about all mothership palettes all the ones that I have personally tried whether they are mothership or mothership Okay <laughs> The mothership or the mothership. I don't know. I whatever. Anyway, so this is the mothership palette. Okay, I love this palette. First of all, packaging ten out of ten. So fucking adorable. It's so cute. It's so sexy. And it was actually the first Pat McGrath palette that I ever purchased. And that set such a tone to how fucking delicious this brand is. You know, I don't know now. <laughs> 
But back then in 2018, when I was like hobgobbling at my desk when I went to Sephora, I think it was like International Women's Day, and I bought that, and I forgot what else I bought. But I was so excited, I remember uh, posting a picture of it on Instagram, and Pat McGrath commented, and I was like, oh my god, like I lost my shit at work. You know, fast forward to 2023, they probably hate my fucking ass, and rightfully so. But listen, I think that palette is just the perfect bronze, neutral, basic bitch color story. The, again, the mattes and the shimmers are just perfect. They're shades that really just do the work for you. This palette is like the perfect warm tone edit. You can't get any better than that. And again, another palette that I feel like gets constantly replicated with other smaller palettes. It's like, you did this. This is amazing. Stop trying to perfect it. There's no way of perfecting it. This this is the thing that should be a permanent palette in your collection. Not the 10,000 fucking iterations that came after it that are always feeling like they're missing something. You hit the nail on the head the first time, stop while you're ahead. <laughs> You know what I mean? That's why I love this palette is that yes, it is a basic bitch sleepy color story, but it's a basic bitch palette that eats other basic bitches for breakfast. It is perfect. You can't ask for a better color story if you're looking for a warm tone neutral palette. So for me, that will always be my number two. So the next palette for me that is like S tier all the way is something that is incredibly different from the brand. And I don't understand why they didn't kind of continue with coming out with like different variations of the Mothership palette. But this one I feel like is so unique compared to everything else. And I'm talking about the Mothership ship number four. This is in the cool Star Wars packaging that I received from a subscriber. This is one of my prized possessions in my collection. I will never get rid of it because of just how fucking cool it is. And I'm sorry, I have to keep doing this because I don't want to like blind you. Uh, <laughs> am I a huge Star Wars person? Star Wars is okay. I really don't give a shit. But this packaging is uh, amazing and way better than that stupid bullshit fucking sticker that they're trying to trick people with when it comes to the Midnight Sun palette. <laughs> but I digress. I don't know if it's because all palettes that are in like the special edition packaging are just amazing but they kind of are. What makes this palette super unique is that nine of the shades are metallic and one is kind of like more of like a satiny finish which normally I do not fuck with satin finishes but this one I will make allowances for. This one is perfect. This is like the most expensive companion palette you will ever have, but the quality is fucking top notch. And I really, really love how metallic and just oh, so fucking beautiful these shades are, and specifically this silver, such a beautiful Tin Man Dick silver, an elegant Tin Man Dick, if you will. Then you have this beautiful blue. Like, are you fucking kidding me? This is amazing. And again, I don't understand why this brand has such fucking finicky formula. But in the beginning, the beginning of time, they had shit that was super solid. I don't see a lot of people talking about this palette, which is kind of a shame, because it's fucking good. It's another palette that just feels fantastic. Some of their newer palettes have such a weird fucking texture that I don't know what happened to them. Like, what the fuck happened? Why are you cutting my eyeballs right now? I don't know if they switch manufacturers. I don't know if they're trying to cut costs. I have no fucking idea. But the texture on some of the newer Mothership palettes, oh, fuck yourself, you're terrible. <laughs> Terrible, I hate it. But anyway, this is just great. So like I said, this is definitely a companion piece palette, but it's probably the best and most luxurious companion piece that you're ever going to find. The metallics are just so fucking alien slut. That's probably the best way I can describe it. A lot of their newer palettes kind of have also like this very weird glitter bukkake explosion, which I'm not all about because some of the glitter can hurt you, it can. But these are just so silky and smooth and you don't have to worry about fallout or just rogue glitter bukkake where it looks like you fucked a disco ball. Everything just looks so perfect and the shades really speak for themselves. This palette is still available to purchase so obviously you don't really need it for you know the fucking what $125, $128 that this palette is. There's always a lot of really good sales at Pat McGrath. That's the one thing that we can all rely on whether it takes six months or six years to get it. If you see this palette on sale next time pick it up. You will not be disappointed. The next palette is another palette that I decluttered. I know. <laughs> I know. I know. But it's kind of very similar to the little Mothership palette, but this one's called the Decadence palette. Nope, that's not what it's called. What the fuck is it called? Bronze Temptation? Bronze Temptation. Honestly, all the names bleed together. I call this one the Christmas palette. <laughs> Again, another palette that is pretty much just a warm tone neutral, with the exception that you have this beautiful green and this beautiful red, ultimately dubbing it the Christmas palette. <laughs> and the reason why I decluttered this palette is that it's a palette that I don't really reach for. But now I'm kind of second guessing if I should have done it because now I think about how beautiful that red is. But I'm okay because there's another palette in this list that I'll talk about that has a red that I feel more satisfied with if I had to like pick and choose between both palettes. But oh, fuck, I should have never decluttered it. <laughs> like, oh, 
Ah, shit. No, 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 you're not gonna use it. You're not gonna use it. You're just gonna finger fuck it and just nobody has time for that. Anyway, this palette's really great. My friend's gonna love it. And now I'm really just thinking of ways of stealing it back from her. I'll figure it out. <laughs> But this is a great palette. It's again, a neutral basic bitch moment, but the two mattes are very buttery, are very pigmented and just blend together well. But the things that really shine in that palette are clearly the shimmer shades. And what makes the shimmer so wonderful is one, they have incredible pigmentation, they have incredible longevity, and they just look so goddamn classy on the eye. It's one of those palettes that no matter what shade combination you're wearing, people will stop and say, what do you have on your face? Because it's just so elegant. That is such a great palette and again, why the fuck did I declutter it? <sighs> anyway, <laughs> this is a great palette. Love it to pieces. And now I'm really sad. Okay, next. Now we're going to move to a different Mothership palette. And this is the Celestial Odyssey palette. So this came out two holiday seasons ago. This is what she looks like. This is one of the more <laughs> affordable palettes. <laughs> I say affordable, it's still like, what, fucking $80? But Pat McGrath, the last, I wanna say, three or four years or so, around the holiday times, they have been releasing these mega palettes, which I think is a really, really good thing to check out if you're interested in wanting to pick up something from the brand, but you didn't wanna blow over $100 on like a 10 pan palette. This is a nice like place to start. However, not all of these palettes have been amazing. This is probably the best one. One, because of the value, and two, for the sheer variety. This color story I feel like has a little bit of everything. My only complaint about this palette is that there's only four mattes and the remaining 14 shades are shimmer shades. But the shimmers, while not the, I don't wanna say, they're not like the same quality of the bigger Mothership palettes be only because these are definitely a little bit more on the chunkier side. There is some Rogue Glitter Bukkake for sure. And they're just not as smooth as say like the Decadence palette, but they're still really good though. Like you'll still get a lot of looks out of them. They're still a really solid formula. They're just not as smooth as the Mothership palettes. This definitely has more of like a crumble cookie texture and can be messy as fuck. But if you look past that and these stupid fucking and strings here this palette is really really solid and also for packaging wise this is a huge departure from the one palette that kind of came out in a similar style where it was just a straight up fucking sticker so <laughs> packaging wise it's really really solid but this is like a nice introduction to the brand if you want to spend a little bit more money than the 65 dollar palettes and get a lot of shades you gotta get like a good feel of the brand just know that it's not the same quality as the big mothership palettes okay so the next palette i want to talk about because i just realized i was going to talk about one palette and then i kind of touched it and i was like this i'm actually should be switched with this one. So this palette is a big mothership palette and this is the number five. This is the one that has that beautiful red shade in it. And I think what makes this palette spectacular is that these four shades are really, really cool and just very, very different. So when I started kind of getting into makeup, specifically Pat McGrath, I was kind of interested in checking out these like quote unquote special shades, right? And these are ones that do not have any weird fucking texture to them. A lot of the special shades have a very hard, almost craft glitter, rough texture, like sandpaper almost. And I don't know about you, but when it comes to like hard texture, I don't want to put that anywhere near my fucking eyeball, let alone anything that is also exploding with glitter. Like I like my eyes. <laughs> I don't want to have to like pop one of my eyeballs out. You know what I mean? Like I don't want to have to do that. And these little special shades are one of the last Mothership palettes on this list. It doesn't have that weird grit texture. I know it kind of boils down to a preference thing. There are people that really love that kind of rough kind of glittery look. I am not one of them. I want to be one of them. I want to look like I fuck Tinkerbell. It just does not look good on me. Okay. Instead it looks like I need a wellness check. Like I don't look right <laughs> and I hate that. But what makes this palette unique is that four quad right here. Now when it comes to the rest of the palette, it's fine. It kind of has a little bit of an overlap with like the bronze seduction palette and maybe something else, especially with this like eggplant shade over here. Um, but honestly though, I feel like, and this is what's kind of fucked up about the brand is that when they release palettes like this, often these are like sleeping. The quality is still really, really good. You're always going to have solid match. You're always going to have great metallic shades, but honestly, people really just buy it for this shit over here, which makes me question why they don't come out with more quads. Why would they do that when they could just like clearly just sell a huge palette and basically just fill it with shades that you already have in your collection. So like I said, the only thing that is like really kind of great about this section is that they are reliable shades. They're pigmented. They have great longevity. 
they're fine. I think when I first had this palette, I was kind of like, I don't know, it's okay. Uh. This palette definitely grew on me and now it holds a special place in my heart because I've never found another red quite like this shade. So for me, this one is very, very unique, but I really don't fuck with this part. It's just kind of more of these four shades here. So if you're ever interested in getting this palette, it's definitely worth exploring if you're into those four shades for sure. Now I'm kind of moving on to the original Mothership palettes, right? So there was Mothership one, two, three. This is my order. The first one being number two and the only reason for that is is because of this shade right here. This shade is everything. This little fucking emerald doohickey, this little duochrome boy is the best. Everything else is okay. It's fine. Um, there's definitely some, again, glitter grit texture over here, so I don't really fuck with this shade, but everything else in the palette I really, really enjoy. And the reason why this is probably the top out of those three, I get way more use out of these colors. This is definitely a warm tone, neutral, basic bitch palette. There are a lot of beautiful gold tones, but by no means are they really fucking unique. The only thing about this palette that makes it pop is that green shade. If you take that green shade out, this is like every other bitch out there. Like there's nothing unique or fun about it. But this green shade is fucking everything. And now I don't know if they ever released that on its own. I probably could do the research, but why would I do that? <laughs> So if somebody knows in the comments, please let me know. If you were interested in that green shade, try to see if you can kind of find a dupe of it because while I do really like this palette, and again, it's only for that fucking green shade. Uh <laughs> I mean, it's fine. It's good. It's not super special uh, as compared to the, the first few palettes that I listed in today's video. Like, it's still good. Like, you're going to get used out of it, but you're going to be like, why the fuck did I spend this amount of money on it? That's kind of how I feel about this one. Green is the only reason why you get it. So moving on to number one, kind of the same thing is that I feel like actually, ooh, no. <sighs> Okay, I kind of think I want to switch now. <laughs> I think this one should actually go before number two. Fuck. All right. This one should go before the last one. And the reason for that is, is because this blue shade is everything. And it's just, it's such a good, cool tone color story. And it's that, ah, fuck. Okay, scrap that. So this actually is before the one that I just talked about. <laughs> the more that I think about it, I'm like, you know what? This is a great palette. This is a nice cool tone palette. The blue shade is obviously the thing that will make you want to get it. It's just this beautiful royal blue that is just absolutely stunning. And if you have blue eyes, it makes it really, really pop. And I think the reason why initially I was going to kind of have this one second to the number two palette is because that this portion of the palette is very uh, just smoky eye. Like I felt like I couldn't really get a lot of like daytime looks with this palette. These were always very nice time smoky eye sex kitten like I feel like that's the only thing that I can create with this palette which is not necessarily a bad thing but I felt like I couldn't really get any like super daytime looks out of it this color story is very cold it's very icy and very much a huge departure of the normal warm tone bullshit that this brand puts out so fuck okay this is definitely over number two so it should be this one then number two because also too, the four of the little shades over here, they're very smooth. There's just something about the texture on this little guy that's just, ugh, I hate it, it's fucking craft glitter. But anyway, yes, this goes before that one. Yeah, I feel good about that one. Oh, should I, I actually should probably go higher. It is pretty fucking unique now that I look at it more and more. Shit, fuck. Okay, I don't know. I, I, <laughs> it's gonna be okay, it's gonna, we're, this is gonna be okay. Okay, yeah, okay. <laughs> This one, then number two. Let's, okay, I feel good about that. Okay, okay, good. <laughs> the next palette I wanna talk about is number three, and this is kinda where it starts to like, dip a little bit. Um, the reason why I like this palette, again, is really just because of like these two shades over here. But the majority of the palette, it's okay. There wasn't anything like super special about it. I also kind of got sick of the fact that it was like the same black shade in those three palettes. Like that was kind of annoying for me. Some of these shades over here had a little bit too much of like that sparkly glitter bukkake that I'm not a fan of. And for me, it just kind of makes the whole experience not as enjoyable to wear it. I wanna like this more and I think when I have it in it's like unicarton packaging, I'm like, ooh, that's so sexy. And it's something about that fucking fuchsia that just makes it pop. When I take it out of its packaging and I'm left with this, I'm kind of like, all right, there's nothing super special about about it. It's funny because I think when it comes to like the actual packaging for each three of these palettes, number two is the best, followed by this one, and then number one is my least favorite. But in reality, it's 
more like one, two, three is how I would actually have the palettes lined up if I'm not looking at packaging. The mattes in the palette are fine. I have no issues with them. The shimmer shades could be better. Again, they're just kind of like, have like a weird kind of like a crumbly kind of a texture where it does leave a little bit of fallout and it just doesn't look as like super saturated and super intense as say some of the other palettes that I mentioned. And then when it comes to the Glitter Bukkake special shades, they're just glitter bukkake to the point where it's like whatever was special about them you kind of like don't even see anymore because there's like sparkle all the way up in your fucking hairline you're like how did that happen I didn't even do anything and for me I find that incredibly annoying the only saving grace is that I bought this at a discount um so I'm very happy about that <laughs> and at a discount I say it's worth it but full price not so much so this is kind of where we're gonna get a little bit more dirty, right? So the next palette I wanna talk about before I delve into the ones that I don't have and explain in full detail and why I don't have them anymore. Let's talk about the uh, number 10, the Moonlit Seduction palette. You know, I don't know. I'm kind of on the fence whether I wanna keep this one or not. I really don't mind the formula on this portion of the palette. I think it's when it comes to here that I'm like, I don't know, do I really need this? Do I really need this? I don't know if I really need this. So again, another palette that kind of just feels very, very similar to previous palettes, especially in that kind of like pinky neutral realm. I kind of feel like Moonlit Seduction is like a cross between Divine Rose 2 and the number five palette. It's kind of like sandwiched in between those two when it comes to this portion of the palette here. The mattes in this palette, they're fine. They're beautifully pigmented. They blend out with ease. I don't really have a bad thing to say about them. It's what I expect and enjoy from the brand. And when it comes to the metallic shades, they're smooth, which is really nice because some of the Mothership palettes kind of have like weird metallic shades. These are fine. They are very reminiscent to uh, the palettes that I originally started with uh, on this list. It doesn't have any weird texture, doesn't have any fallout, it just makes the lid look super metallic and super alien slut, which is great. When it comes to these shades, they're super fucking sheer. Like very sheer to the point where even glitter glue is like, I don't know if there's anything here. You really have to dig into the pan to kind of get any sort of payoff. And when you do get the payoff, it just looks really fucked up and patchy and just so textured. I am not a fan of textured shadows. And if you are, then you might really, really enjoy this one. But on me, it just ages the fuck out of my eyelids. It takes me from being 37 to 97. Like it just looks all crinkly and craggly. And then it starts to kind of get into the stone goblin texture where it looks like I'm turning into cement before your very eyes. I don't fuck with this. I don't fuck with this at all. The best way that I can apply these to kind of have some sort of a payoff is in like a very light coat. Coating. But still then I'm getting all this unnecessary glitter bukkake that's flying all over my face, in my hair, on my clothes, in my mouth. Like it's disgusting. So like I said, I kind of go back and forth because I really enjoy this portion of the palette. Is it the most unique? Not at all. Not by any means, but it's solid. But when it kind of comes here, which is the showstopper of the palette, it just leaves me feeling wanting more. So I'm going to hold on to this one, but don't be surprised if it's kind of gone in <laughs> the next decluttering. Anyway, so yeah, on the fence about that one. So now kind of moving on to the things that I don't have uh, because I, I just, I they needed to be purged from me because of how fucking terrible they are. Let's start with the first mega mothership palette and that is called the Celestial Divinity palette. The first thing that really annoyed me about this palette is one, all the shades look exactly the same. And I know you're probably saying, how is that fucking possible? Look at the range there. Yeah, bitch, there is no range when you put them on the eyes. When you put them on the eyes, they look fucking identical. Like I couldn't tell if I use this shade or this shade or that shade, they all kind of bleed together to make it look like a very shiny, glittery fucking mess. Hated it. The second thing about that palette that irked the fuck out of me was the fact that the cover was a sticker, which made me really kind of like side eye Pat McGrath a little bit because I feel like when it comes to packaging, they are tens across the board. It always looks luxurious and beautiful and opulent and it makes me feel like I'm fucking rich and I love that about the makeup. But then when I'm bamboozled by seeing some little corner of a sticker come up and then I realize if I keep tugging at it, it's just fucking cardboard. It aggravates the shit out of me, especially if I'm dropping like 80 something dollars. Bitch, I want it to be solid. I want it to be perfect. It just felt so haphazard. So between the fact that everything looked the fucking same and it was so cheap looking, it just made me question like, where, where's this brand going? It almost felt like a joke. That said, it's a piece of shit. And if you have FOMO from that palette, don't, don't, okay? <laughs> 
fucking be happy that you didn't waste your money. The next palette I want to talk about is the Bridgerton palette. Diamond on the First Water. Now, okay, a couple of things. One, I never watched Bridgerton, so I didn't really know anything about it. And I think from what I'm told, it's, it's a guy who has daddy issues and can't like have sex with his wife or like he can't like come in her, something like that. <laughs> That's the gist of it. I've been told that no, there's, you know, way more to it, but I don't care. That's what I want to believe about the show. <laughs> And that's what I believe. And very similarly to that synopsis of the show, that's how I feel about this palette. It's just like all bark, no bite. Nobody's climaxing here, all right? <laughs> This is where I kind of get fucked up from the brand is that I felt that these shades are kind of very similar to all the other palettes that have come out, especially after Divine Rose and Divine Rose 2 and all that stuff. It's just that same kind of pinky, purpley neutral shade over and over and over and over and over again. Except the quality of these are just not on par with the Divine Rose 2. The only thing this palette got going is the cool ass pan embossing. That's fucking it. Like that's it. When it comes to the special shades or like the shimmery shades, they're garbage. Again, and Another one is just unnecessary glitter bukkake that's just like weird kind of a texture that just does not look right on the eyelids. And the sparkles hurt. I especially got that blue icy shade in my eye, was not a good time. And when it comes to the shimmer shades, it's very much that same kind of formula that I'm just not a fan of. They just have like a weird texture, they feel rough, it feels too like Joann's craft glitter, not a fan. There wasn't anything special or unique about the palette, and I kind of felt like that icy blue shade just really didn't, I don't know, it didn't complement anything in my opinion. It just made everything just look that much more harsh. Again, the only thing that it got going for itself is the fact that it had really cool pan embossings. Beyond that, it can eat a bag of dicks. We don't care. Which then leads me into the second <laughs> Bridgerton palette, Bell of the Ball. You know what's really funny? Those two palettes, even though each palette has like a different kind of special shimmer, they both are the same. This is where I feel like the brand gaslights the shit out of me because I'm like, you guys released this? They're like, no. I'm like, but no, no, you did. And they're like, no, we didn't. We didn't release it like this. <laughs> I'm like, but you did though. Like these shades are the same, aren't they? No. I feel so fucked up. This is the palette that is going to drive me into like a deep psychosis. <laughs> probably the best way that I could describe it. I know it's the same, but they're telling me it's different. And the call is coming from inside the house, okay? Again, it's that pink and that purple. Stop, you did it so well with Divine Rose. Don't rock the boat. Why are you doing this? Stop it, stop it, stop it. The masks are very similar to the first Bridgerton palette. They're just, they're fine, they're lackluster. Like, there's nothing like super fucking amazing about them. And then when it comes down to the shimmer shades, it's like, mm -hmm. like there's nothing special about the palette at all. The only thing that could be potentially digmatizing is that yellow gold shade. But in reality, is it really? No, if you have the Mothership 3, it's kind of very similar to that. So again, I feel like a lot of the smaller palettes are just re-edits of all the existing Mothership palettes. Like they just take a little bit of from here and a little bit from there and it's not different enough to warrant you buying them if that makes any sense especially if you have the bigger mothership palettes now if you don't have them i can see the interest of wanting to get something smaller because it's at a cheaper price point but if the quality is garbage you know it's just like you're still paying a lot of money for something that's just so subpar Okay, so yeah, no, it's a fucking no for me dog. Now the next palette is the Mothership Mega Palette and this is the Celestial Nirvana Palette. Yo, okay, yo, that palette fucks me up when I think about it. I get so mad about it because I was so happy about that one holiday palette, the, uh, what the hell is it called? The, the Celestial Odyssey palette. Like that is a very good, I hate to even say affordable because it's still really expensive, but like in terms of like what the brand is known for, affordable palette. And I was like riding that high still. So when I saw this palette, I was like, yo, this is gonna be fucking good. It's not, what the fuck? I think this is what's making me kind of pause on the brand. Not only, not only is everything that they're putting out just, fucking the same. But this was one of the first times where I had to deal with a lot of muddiness. This is something that I'm not really super familiar with when it comes to this brand because their formula is always solid. If not amazing, it's always at least solid or like, okay. This one is incredibly muddy. All the shades lifted, like poof, I don't wanna be here anymore. And if they did decide to stick around, everything looked like diarrhea on my face. <laughs> And I'm not even talking about the fucking Yucca palette from Natasha Denona where those are guaranteed baby shit colors. No matter what I did, it just all looked like 
diarrhea. Like, how the fuck did that happen? When did it get food poisoning all over my eyes? Like, when the fuck did that happen? I get so mad about that one because it looks so good. It looks so good. The color story looks fun. The collection overall looked really fun. And I was like, oh my God, yes. Like, Pat McGrath's gonna kill it this holiday season. I don't think there was anything that I liked from that holiday collection. Maybe one thing? <laughs> Was that the collection where the highlighters fell out of the pan? I think so. Fuck that collection. I can't, I can't. It just, brr, it makes me so angry. You have no idea. <laughs> just so fucking angry. I hate it. Absolutely hate it. I was so fucking excited to declutter that one. It was just a waste of money, a waste of time. And it really, again, made me question the brand. Like, what the fuck are you guys doing? Like, what are y'all doing? They're coming out with so much shit and nothing is special anymore. Nothing is just luxurious and opulent and just, just worth the fucking money. Like, none of it. This is all just bullshit garbage and it's taking a year and a day to get to me. Like, fuck this shit. <laughs> No, so absolutely not. That one's terrible. Now, I kind of go back and forth between the next two palettes. Ah, oh, fuck, I hate, I hate them both. But I'm going to, I'm gonna say Midnight Sun. <laughs> the Mothership Midnight Sun. That palette belongs in hell. <laughs> There's a special place for that palette now. Because it's just fucking garbage. It's garbage. Then the brand has the balls, the balls to fucking repackage it. Okay, bullshit sticker for Star Wars. Do I have to say that again? Like, did that sink in? Like, it's a fucking sticker, bro. Like, <laughs> it's a palette that they've already existed that I feel like a lot of people just didn't even really like. It's one of those sleepy palettes that people forget about. They decided, you know what? We have all this stock in the back. Why don't you get a couple of interns and we'll just slap some fucking stickers on it and we'll just sell it for full retail. They were like banking on Star Wars people to like fucking buy all that back stock up. Like they were. That's how I feel about it. And you cannot convince me otherwise, okay? I hate that <laughs> I hate that balance so much. Weird texture. Again, a very thin fucking formula. I felt like there was no payoff with the special shades. There was nothing unique or enticing about it. And again, it was just all fucking glitter bukkake and not in a sexy fun way. I hate this palette and I hate so much that they repackaged this palette to get more buzz because they obviously purchased way too many palettes and they couldn't fucking sell them. I can't, I fucking, fuck that palette, fucking disgusting. <laughs> No. Which then leads me to the worst palette, I think, in history of the Pat McGrath uh, mothership and mothership palettes is the Divine Rose one. I hate that palette. <laughs> I hate that palette so much my makeup dick hurts, okay? Not only did the glitter and the shimmer shades fuck up my eyeballs where I had extreme eye irritation, but it was so pedestrian and one note. It was as if they took one of like their pre-existing six pan palettes and they were like, all right, we're just gonna fucking slap these shades on this side and then we're gonna take these four shades and pair it with such boring, basic bullshit colors that will make you keep wondering where the fuck is the rose in all of this? There is nothing that speaks rose about this collection. Now, Divine Rose 2, I feel like that is like, amazing. I understand the color story. I could see where they're pulling from. It totally speaks to me on another level. Like that makes sense. This though, this is just so blah. There's nothing like poppy or fun or exciting. Everything is just so muted, not in a good way. It feels very flat, very two-dimensional. But the glitter bukkake and the eye irritation fucked me up so much so that I really was questioning if I should ever even purchase anything from this brand ever again. But y'all know me, I'm a glutton for punishment. And I kind of just, you know, I like going back over and over and over again. Like I know this relationship's not gonna work and I know that they're cheating on me with everybody. But you know what? Maybe this time it'll be different. <laughs> That's how I feel about this brand. But anyway, like it was just such a boring fucking palette, a boring color story compared to like how this brand kind of started out, right? Especially with the Mothership palettes that yes, while they were, albeit mostly neutral, it was those pops of color from the special shades that really made this like, yes, it's a luxury brand, but like an edgy luxury brand. Like it made them unique. This one was just like, what? what is this sleepy time fucking tea bullshit? Like, what is this? This feels so old <laughs> and just not good and just, Mm, like there's something, there's something off about this. I'm glad that the brand has definitely departed from these really, really like boring, old, crusty, crunchy color stories, but they didn't go too far, right? Because they still recycle a lot of shit where it just, again, gaslights the fuck out of you because you're like, didn't this come out already? 
It didn't? You sure? You sure about that? <laughs> like, you sure about that? Um, so I don't know, like, this to me is probably the worst thing that they've ever created. And I think this is probably one of their best selling palettes where a lot of people are like, oh my god, Fine Rose is amazing. It's not. It's not. It's boring as fuck. There's nothing unique about the color story. The glitter bukkake is intense and not in a fun way. So for me, it's the worst piece of shit palette that I've ever had the uh, displeasure of buying. And I'm so glad that it's out of my home. I'm so happy that the Divine Rose 2 came out. This is what it should have been. It's funky, it's spunky, it's rose. There's a good healthy mix of neutral and a good healthy mix of just like fun celestial alien slut shades. Like there's a good mixture here. Divine Rose has the same aesthetic as a nursing home. It's just sad, it's just sad. So there you have it. That is uh, the ranking in my opinion of the Pat McGrath palettes. And I'm actually kind of proud of myself because for Libra, I thought it was gonna be a little bit more like, ooh, it's this one, no this one. And it only happened a couple of times. So I'm very happy that I feel solid in my choices. <laughs> Anyway, now I would love to hear from y'all. Uh, let me know down below how you feel about the Pat McGrath palettes and what is your ranking. And of course, if you want to see me do another video like this, maybe say with Natasha Denona, please let me know down below. Um, press the number two down below and I'll be more than happy to do that. That one will be definitely a little bit more complicated because I got rid of a lot of those fucking palettes. <laughs> I feel like there's a lot more error <laughs> on that side. I definitely, if I had to like weigh the two, I, I like Pat McGrath more than I do Natasha Denona, for sure. But then at the end of the day, is this all worth it? Not really, not at full price anyway. So <laughs> these are definitely, uh, get them on sale. Even even my top tier ones, it's like, get them on sale. Any hoosies, with that said, I wanna say thank you so much for watching. I truly appreciate it. As always, feel free to like, comment, hit that subscribe button, it's free, and hit that bell icon for notification of all my future posts. Follow me on Instagram. And to my beautiful, wonderful YouTube members and patrons, thank you so much for keeping this delicious, disgusting, filthy, trashy, really trashy, really filthy, really gross, really nasty, really disgusting, garbage boat afloat, couldn't do without you. I love your adorable little delicious faces. And I just wanna gobble you all up so you live inside my belly and we can be one. If you wanna know what's currently on my face, everything you need to know will be listed in the description box down below. Along with these palettes. And I'll see you little pumpkins later. Bye!